Now to sport with Meredith Shocker being briefed on such a horrific hor 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 crime. Well, I've long been an Easter, sh sto Easter show staple. One million BT customers could see their bulls uh, bills full. Hey everyone, welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Jay Dorena. Most of us at one time or another have gone down an endless YouTube hole and have donated all our productive hours to the god of compilation videos. It doesn't matter what you're watching, Russian dash cam videos, the most insane car accidents you've ever seen, or those cute videos of dogs hanging out with cows. It makes me want to cry a little bit. Well, some of the best out there are anchor bloopers, and my personal favorites are when they puke out of nowhere. And there's something about a person puking that makes me giggle like a kid who just found out what farts are. So today we'll be diving into some of the more awkward moments that happen with news anchors with today's list of top 10 funniest live TV interviews. Make sure you stick around for the top 3 because I got some classics on this that you guys are going to love for sure. As always make sure you like, comment, subscribe and hit the little notification bell. Also follow Most Amazing Top 10 on Instagram and Facebook. It's a great way to get to know myself and the other hosts a little bit better. And without taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10 we have Powerball prize money. We're going to kick off today's list with one of the most honest people who has ever been captured on television. This guy is out there trying to win 500 million dollars, literally half a billion dollars is what's going on the Powerball at this Time. You could go from working in a factory, sacrificing your lower back for 15 bucks an hour, to living like Jay Z and Beyonce, flying around in a private jet, eating endangered caviar, and wiping your butt with gold encrusted toilet paper. Well, this news anchor went to hit the streets to find out what the people would do if they won this kind of money, and my god, the guy she asked hit her with the most straight up answer ever. Can I ask you, if you won all the money, what would you do with it? Bunch of hookers and cocaine. Oh, okay. That's that's not good. <laughs> we were hoping for a different answer. That's probably not the answer that we're looking for. Hookers and cocaine, baby. This guy doesn't beat around the bush for a second. He doesn't say he wants to buy a nice house or travel or donate to charity. He reveals his soul to the world and his soul wants hookers and cocaine. I salute you, sir, for telling it how it is. At number nine, we have Kid Texas. Next on the list, we have someone who I've nicknamed Kid Texas. I don't know if he's from Texas, but it kind of goes with the story. I'm guessing that he is from Texas and Kid Texas just kind of has a good ring to it. You might remember this story because it happened not that long ago when a home invader got shot down by a little kid with a fitted cap. Here's the clip to refresh your memory. And it, went, it was a full metal jacket bullet. Huh. I went straight to the bag and hit him and was like and he started crying like a little baby. This is one of the most badass things I've ever seen. The kid saw a man in his house, shot him in a place that didn't kill him so the police could come and arrest him. While he was waiting for the police to get there, he called the guy a little baby for crying. Don't mess with Kid Texas unless you want to be used for target practice. I wish I had this kind of composure. If someone broke into my house, I'll probably run to the bathroom so I could lock myself in there. And hopefully the intruder doesn't see my naked shadow scurrying there for safety. And at number eight, we got the building is on fire. It feels just like yesterday that every week we had a new person on the news giving us an interview that was so good that you know it was going to get turned into a song. And this one was one of the best. All I know about this interview is that the building was clearly on fire beforehand, and this lady was not going to get caught up in that trash. No way. I love how you can tell that she just got out of bed and she's already so focused in the interview. I guess escaping a burning building will do that to you. But I like to think that she wakes up every day like that. I said, no. So the girl come downstairs, she come out her apartment with her baby with no shoes on. I said, oh girl, it's cold outside. Ready to narrate everything that happened to her with the enthusiasm of a sports broadcaster that just watched a massive dunk. What? I got my three kids and we bounced out. Uh-uh, we ain't gonna be in no fire, not today. And at number seven, we have Farmer Tells a Tale. I didn't even know there was guys like this that actually exist. It seems like he was pulled right out of a cartoon. Well, I just had got done feeding my chickens, watering them and stuff, and I walked back to my house there to get my phone so I could 
play a video game on it. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy's first words were yee-haw. I want to hang out with him. I bet he knows how to barbecue like a champ and probably has moonshine so strong you would astral project out of your body and see all your ancestors. He's describing a crash that happened on his property where two people in a jeep smash into a pole unleashing a swarm of bees that sting the crap out of them. Which sounds like the worst chain of events ever. I wouldn't be surprised if while this was happening his boss left him a voicemail saying that we know that you've been stealing and you're fired. It would just go with everything so perfectly. But the way the farmer describes everything happening is so much more beautiful so I'm gonna let him do it. And there's a guy come out screaming and squalling and uh, running around about like a chicken with head cut off. But I told him he need to get out of that water but say I didn't know he was getting eat up by bees I thought he was just high. That girl in that little bikini she had a little red dot thought over here. I need to describe more things with the word screaming and squalling. At number six, we have Flossie's birthday party. Okay, Flossie is a straight up G. This lady doesn't have the time to be fake anymore. Firstly, her name is Flossie Dicky, which is one of the greatest unused porn names of all time, and she's being interviewed for her hundred and tenth birthday. Only bad live this long. But truly, what makes this centurion a legend is her response to this reporter. Later today, Flossie's family is going to be coming out here to throw you a big birthday party. Are you excited for your party? Not one bit. <laughs> She's 110 years old. She doesn't care anymore. She wants to be left alone so she can chill and watch TV. She even says earlier in the interview that her favorite activity is napping. I can't wait till I'm at the age where my favorite activity is napping and I can tell my family that I don't care about them. Flossie, we all love you. Thank you for showing everyone what it means to be real. At number 5 we have the Brisbane Crime Stopper. Now we're going to fly over to Australia where the spiders are big enough to eat children and the kangaroos run wild like raccoons. We have a guy with no front teeth who stopped a guy from fleeing the scene of a crash after he smashed into a store. The jokes write themselves on this one. Some dude falls asleep behind the wheel of a car and then drove into a store. He tries to take off on foot after he smashed into this store. But I think this local hero gives a much better breakdown than I could ever. So here it is. You like don't be taken off like you've just crashed into the shop. Oh, in goes, oh mate, I fell asleep behind the wheel. And I'm like, yeah, right, oh mate. Well, you still don't be fleeing the scene. And he goes, don't be a hero, mate. I wasn't trying to be a bloody hero. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think he saved the day. And my favorite part of the whole interview is this. He's him down the street in the undies, and then he started getting too far. And I'm like, oh, well, I better catch up to him quicker and come back home and drop my car. And started chasing oh you up the street in your little purple car. At number four, we have I Like Turtles. Probably one of the most famous interviews of all time. I think there are more people that have watched this socially awkward kid give one of the most cringy interviews of all time than people who actually go out and vote. If there are any of you who've been living under a rock and don't know what I'm talking about, we got the highlight for you. Friend the zombie, Jonathan, you're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. That's a piece of history right there. To this day, I have no idea the relationship between liking turtles and getting painted like a zombie. I tried digging through the internet to see if I could find out who this kid grew up to be, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I think he probably went to hiding after the whole world started memeing him. He probably wanted him and his turtles to be left alone. Not everyone is made to bask in the spotlight. But if you do know where he went, Please leave it in the comments. At number three, we got, are you gonna miss your mom? I think this interview encapsulates how we all feel when we wake up in the morning and we realize that we might have to work at a desk job for the rest of our lives. Are you gonna miss your mom? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> this kid went super viral and I think it's because this moment captures when you realize life slowly takes away all the things you love. It does seem kind of mean laughing at a poor four year old crying but I literally can't watch this clip with a straight face. I think it makes me a monster but I honestly don't care. For some reason I take pleasure in watching other people's real pain. I should probably talk to someone about that but I'm gonna wait until it manifests into a serious problem like an adult. Push down your feelings until they hurt the people around you. That's what growing up is all about. That's what this kid learned that day. At number two we got 
Ain't nobody got time for that. Lord Jesus, it's a fire. If you haven't seen this interview, I have no idea what you've been doing. This one is not only one of the funniest interviews of all time, but it also became an amazing song. It's reporter interviewing Sweet Brown, I do not have confirmation if that's her real name, right after an apartment building burns that she was inside of. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. And then the smoke got me, I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. And she's right, you know. Ain't nobody got time for that. If you've ever been in a burning building, you don't stick around to figure out what's going on. You get yourself to the nearest window and then you yeet yourself out of there. And then you go get some snacks at 7-Eleven and watch the baby burn. You might take a moment to look around for your kids or the PlayStation, but that's it. Before you get the hell out and look up some vacancies on Craigslist. And at number one on the list we have... It's not very, very unusual. The three victims were part of a CXS crew. Right now, Fred here is a legend. Getting in with news anchors and throwing out the most unforgettable catchphrase. This guy was so big that other people started bombing interviews using his famous slogan. Fred never cared about what people thought about him or if there would be any backlash against him. He is truly fearless and a beacon of freedom of speech, a role model for kids everywhere. Well, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I mean. Fred, if that is his real name, went out there on the streets and shouted profanity into a microphone so we could all smile for a little longer. I mean, some people hate this dude and think he should be locked up, but to those people I say, lighten up. If you're gonna get upset about something, start with the American banking system or war in third world countries and leave Fred to continue being a dick to news anchors. He deserves his spot as number one on today's list of top 10 funniest live news anchor interviews. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you guys coming to check out this video. So these funny videos are a new angle we're going down. Let us know if you guys like it. Please fill stuff out in the comments. Share this video with all your friends. If you really like this new angle, we'll make more of them. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Also, follow Most Amazing Top 10 on Instagram and Facebook. It's a great way to get to know myself and the other hosts a little bit better. Until next time, I've been Shade Arena, and I'm going to, you guys know, 